This is an update video to my Trump Future Antichrist video series. I have been predicting since before the 2016 election that Donald Trump would eventually become the biblical antichrist of Revelation 13. Every six months or so, I've been writing update videos commenting on the progress of that prediction based on current events. I've received some support from a minority of people in the comments section, but a majority of people usually argue against me for one of two reasons. The Trump supporters hate me for saying he's the Antichrist, and the Democrats, which I affectionately call the Democrats, hate me because I support our president. Ironic, huh? It's an interesting position I've put myself into here with this prediction. I don't fit in with the average person on either side of the political debate. I love Trump today, but I'm claiming he's going to become the Antichrist. So both the left and the right hate me. I'm okay with that, actually, because as I've said before, my allegiance is to the Word of God, not to anything else. As long as Donald Trump continues to improve the federal government, I will continue to support him and defend his actions against the godless liberal left. But once the event happens that turns him into the Antichrist, my support for him will vanish, and I'll be a lonely biblical Christian surrounded by godless liberals on one side and deceived nominal Christians on the other side. So this video will be addressing the rise of what I'll call Teflon Don. And just to quickly explain that name, there was a gangster named John Gotti, who people called Teflon Don, because none of the criminal charges against him would ever stick. Teflon was a popular non-stick coating back then for pots and pans. And the Italian word Don means boss, and became the word used to describe a crime boss in the Mafia. But John Gotti was actually guilty of the crimes he was, he was charged with. He was eventually convicted and died in prison. The real Teflon Don is running our country right now. I'm not the first one to call Donald Trump Teflon Don. The liberal left has been using that term because they think he's corrupt like John Gotti was. They have accused him of so many things over the last three plus years, and pretty much nothing has ever stuck. And the last year was the worst of it. I'd like to compile a list of things the president was accused of that ended up not being true. As I write this, the most recent thing was the accusation that Trump was trying to meddle with the sentencing of Roger Stone by tweeting that nine years was unfair and a miscarriage of justice. He's apparently not even allowed to voice his opinion about something without it being labeled as meddling. But that's nothing compared to what happened just before it. The Democrats wasted a whole bunch of time on a futile attempt to, of removing Trump from office when they could have been spending that time doing something constructive for the nation, like working on infrastructure, like they were supposedly going to do over a year ago. Did you watch any of the impeachment coverage? I did. I watched the ridiculous Schiff show in the House and the Senate. The votes were completely bipartisan. Only Mitt Romney, a secret Illuminati agent posing as a conservative now that John McCain is gone, broke ranks to vote against Trump on only one of the two articles. I guarantee you he was forced to do that by his Illuminati handlers. But what did the impeachment trial prove? It proved that the Democrats will go to any length to resist Trump. It proved that they have little interest in serving the people. They just want power. They can't stand that an outsider, someone who's not part of their Illuminati cabal, was able to kick them out of power. They thought for sure that their voter fraud efforts would be enough to put Hillary into the White House. But it wasn't enough. Despite all their voter fraud, there was still enough Trump voters to overcome it. And now all they can do is dream about removing him from office one way or another. Part of my prediction, according to scripture, includes 
an assassination attempt. Impeachment didn't work. Voting him out of office in November isn't going to work either. I think they'll have no choice after the election. They won't want to endure another four years. The impeachment trial showed us how the Democrats can twist interpret anything and everything. Trump said, do us a favor, and the Democrats quote him as saying, do me a favor. Adam Schiff takes the phone call and totally rewrites it into a mafia shakedown. They said over and over again that nobody is above the law, but they never even once showed a single law that he had supposedly broken. The Constitution clearly says high crimes and misdemeanors. The Articles of Impeachment had nothing to do with neither a high crime nor a misdemeanor. They also said time and time again that the evidence against him was overwhelming. Yet it took them almost 24 hours in the House to present their case. They rejected the witnesses the Republicans wanted to hear and only allowed the ones the Democrats wanted to hear. And the vote ended up being split down party lines. So much for being overwhelming. But then they claim they need new witnesses in the Senate trial because the case they had already presented to in the House was so overwhelming? It really amazes me how the Democrats can act this way with a straight face. At best, they're so blinded by demons that they actually believe the garbage they're peddling. At worst, and this is what I believe, they're knowingly lying, trying to manipulate the system to remove the people's chosen president from office so they can return to their originally scheduled Illuminati New World Order. Before the impeachment trial was the Mueller report. Again, Teflon Don was found innocent of colluding with the Russians to somehow steal the 2016 election. The irony is that it was actually the Hillary campaign that colluded with the Russians to steal the 2016 election. But it didn't work because too many people voted for Trump for their voter fraud to work. So since they couldn't impeach Trump using the Mueller report, they had to concoct an impeachable offense out of the Ukraine phone call. It's like they tried to put out a fire with a fire extinguisher, but it turned out to be empty. So then they tried to put the fire out by spitting on it. So now the rest of this year is going to be all about the 2020 election. The Democrats are just trying to out-left each other, and the only thing they agree on is that they need to beat Trump. Biden's campaign is pretty much dead in the water now that the world knows about Hunter. They can see him saying all the ridiculous things he's been saying, not even knowing what state he's in, calling people mean names, and nobody's buying that his son was qualified for that job in Ukraine. Everybody knows they're both guilty of corruption. I don't believe the future is going to dig Biden out of the pit he's in. He's either going to drop out of the race soon, or the Illuminati is going to rig a comeback for him somehow, but I doubt it. I think they'd rather move on with someone new, like Mayor Pete. The Democrats also have another serious problem. Just like Donald Trump came in and took over the Republican Party, the Democratic Party is also being taken over by Bernie Sanders, who's not even a Democrat. He's their Trump. The left loves him, and the DNC does everything they can to defeat him. They rigged the 2016 elections against him so that Hillary would win. They're trying to do the same thing again, but now it looks like Mayor Pete is their new puppet. They want to promote homosexuality and abortion. He's young and attractive like John Kennedy was. He'll do whatever his Illuminati handlers tell him to do. And I'll bet he picks a woman as his running mate if he wins the Democratic no nomination. But none of it matters. No matter who wins the nomination, Donald Trump is still going to win the 2020 election by an even bigger and more evident this time landslide. 
I got criticized for claiming the 2016 election would be a landslide. They say it wasn't. They say Hillary won the popular vote. I disagree. I believe voter fraud covered up how huge of a landslide it really was. And hopefully 2020 will have less DNC voter fraud this time, so the landslide will be more obvious. So what does this all have to do with the Antichrist? Think about it. The Antichrist will need to be someone who is loved and accepted by the masses. If everyone is going to listen to him and take his mark, there has to be a track record preceding him that the people will honor. My prediction is that he will win the election in November, and then somebody, probably prompted by the Illuminati, will try to assassinate him. They will be so outraged that they have to endure another four more years of Trump that they'll think it's the only option. They have no problem killing babies in the womb. They'll claim this is for the greater good, too. And it'll probably be funded and planned by someone like George Soros. I don't think a lone wolf would be able to pull it off without help. Once again, I have to announce my disclaimer. I love Donald Trump as president, and I seriously hope my prediction is wrong. I would love to see him continue to drain the swamp and improve America. If nothing changes him into the Antichrist, I'd be for repealing the amendment that limits term limits to two terms. I'd also love seeing Don Jr. succeed him in 2024. But I know God's word is true and that the Antichrist is due. Trump fits the model.